How you doing guys? We're back. Uh, we have another beer review. This is something new in the NSLC from NS. A uh, new brewery. Just started up, I guess. Uh, I don't know when they started, but uh, their stuff just showed up in the uh, NSLC. You can get in single cans or six packs of cans. This is Spindrift Brewing Company's Coastal Lager. And it's got a buoy right on there. Something you'll often often see uh, sort of uh, show up on the coastline, drift up on the shore. Some loose buoys, some old buoys. Uh, so there you go. And these guys are out of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Uh, I guess this is available in select NSLCs. So I'm actually kind of surprised to see it showed up in ours, uh, but it did. So there you go. They say we don't mind taking the long way around which is why we decided to brew a beer that takes time patience and perseverance sure we could have started with something easier but we think the journey is the best part well that and the taste we hope you do too Andy Rob and Andrew co-founders of Spindrift Brewing Company it quid quid est which I don't know what I don't know what that translates to uh, out of uh, Latin or whatever but uh, whatever it's probably something fairly stoic and interesting. Uh, ingredients, water, malt, hops, and yeast. So there you go. Uh, and it sits at 5% alcohol by volume. So there you go. I like the can. I really do. That's actually why I picked it up. Like like I said, sort of, you know, I just do reviews once in a while now. Don't always pick up everything that shows up on the shelf that's new. But, you know... The can attracted my attention. Actually, I didn't even know this was from Nova Scotia when I picked it up. I didn't even read the can. I was just like, "Oh, that looks really cool. It's got a Bowie on. Uh, it's got a buoy on there, and uh, kind of a neat design for the can logo." So I picked it up. So there you go. Yeah, it's actually uh, just like standard can, and it's got like the pla. It's it's not printed on. It's got a plastic uh, thing around it. So there you neat. So, uh, cost effective. A little active there. Whoa, there, doggy. Probably the exact wrong glass to use for this, honestly. Uh, do I have another glass here? I can just dump this in. Nah, fuck it. I'll just pause this and we'll be right back once the head dies down a little bit and then we'll review this beer. Let's be right back, guys. Okay, we're back with Spindrift Lager. Died down fairly quickly, but it's still got a really nice, impressive head going on there. Like, that looks really good. Um, she's a slightly darker copper color than a lot of macro lagers. So, there you go. Actually, kind of IPA color almost. Yeah. Right through Roma. Cheers. Well, that's unique. Very malty, grainy sort of smell. But it smells really good. Um, there's almost, I don't know if it's just like the amount of malt and whatever percentage they put in this or whatever compared to what hops are in there, but there's this real, like, woodiness to it, almost. Like, I'm getting a sort of a vegetal kind of smell as well, almost like approaching, like, the sort of um, canned, canned, like, green beans, canned cream, cream corn kind of thing. Which is usually a bad note in in a, in a lager, especially. Um, but here, I don't even know if it's that or if it's just this woodiness. I don't know what they do with this beer. They don't really say anything other than it's a lager. So, I don't know if they use any special pro process or whatever, but it smells woody. I don't know if it's... Maybe it's just the hops that they use. Maybe they use the special hops. I don't know. I, I kind of... Just a note, if uh, the guys from Spindrift ever uh, see this. Actually, I should probably just go on their website here. 
Why not? We'll just jump right on here. Man, look at me. I'm doing research for a logger. That is retarded. But this is actually good. Um, Spindrift. Let's see what Todd the Beer Dude has to say. He uh, just apparently he was at Spindrift. Uh, so apparently the brewmaster Kelly Robertson, who was a native of Nova Scotian, worked previously at Bose and Garrison. Let's go right to the post here. So credit to Todd DeVere, dude, because he's giving me some information on here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. This is really exciting for you guys watching while I read this blog post. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's not six packs, it's four packs, by the way, for the, uh, I was just, I don't know, standardly you think of six packs, but apparently they have a barrel aging program going, apparently going to happen soon, but yeah, that's about it. Okay, so they don't really say, doesn't really say if there's anything special about the lager, but um, it smells different, man. It's got this... Uh, got this kind of almost like burnt driftwood kind of smell to it like a beach fire kind of thing going on maybe that's just me maybe I'm getting the notes wrong someone else might go into this and only smell like canned vegetables I don't know might be for you but uh, that's what I'm getting out of it so we're going right to taste now I'm really excited to try this cheers guys So very light body, uh, you know, it's a lager, whatever. Um, man, it's got a nice, you know, sort of typical kind of um, North American pale malt kind of start. But I like the finish on this, man. Um, I don't know if it's a, the hops or what, but... I mean, I'm assuming, I mean, it should be the hops. I'm assuming it's the hops. There's a very nice dry finish on this. Uh, it's got a little bit of a bite to it. I mean, I'd be actually interested to know what the IBUs are on this. Because uh, it feels like it's above the range of just your typical macro lager. Or even your typical micro lager, honestly. Um... There's, there's definitely a hop kick to it. Actually, the hops are the sort of the showcase in this one. Like, it, up front, it's just your standard kind of nondescript lager kind of thing going on. But once you get to the finish, and the finish just jumps right at you, nice, dry, slightly bitter finish. Uh, lingers very well. And again, that sort of, uh, like I was talking, like, smoked beech wood, beech fire, driftwood kind of taste there. Um, um, I mean, I don't know what the, what hops they're putting in here, but whatever they're doing, they're doing it right, man. This is really good. This is actually really good. I'm going to be buying this again. And I should just really jump to the NSLC site here for a second, because I was asked this question earlier, and I didn't have an answer, because... Uh, to be honest with you, when I picked this off the shelf, I didn't even read the can. I didn't know this was from Dartmouth. Um, I I was just totally attracted to the label. That's why I picked it up. So, um, yeah, uh, NSLC spin drift. 
Let's go here. Coastal Lager. There we go. Let's see what they have for the price on this one. Okay, well, the four pack is $13.99, which is, well, for a 473 milliliter can, that's not too bad. Let's see if we can find the single can, though. Search. Search on the shitty NSLC websites. 360 a can. That's totally acceptable. Totally worth the money, honestly. 360 for this size can of a really good lager. Um, it's a good competitive price with the more decent Euro loggers and stuff that are in the NSLC. And, you know, some local loggers as well that are okay. Uh, check them out, man. If you're in Nova Scotia, I don't know if they're outside of Nova Scotia anywhere, but I know they're in the NSLC. Um, if you're looking for a decent lager with, like, a really interesting sort of hop finish on this one, uh, jump into it. Really, really good. Good job, guys. I'm actually really excited to see what Spindrift uh, comes up with later on. Uh, I'm going to give this a solid 3.75 out of 5. Really, really good stuff. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.